Hey everybody, it's Charles from HumbleMechanic.com. Today, taking your questions on oil leaks, Haldex failures, headlight issues, and more. This is episode 261 of the Humble Mechanic Podcast. All right, if you want to get a question on a show like this, email me, charles at HumbleMechanic.com. Be sure to put question for Charles in that subject line. Ask your question right at the top. Give me some space, then give me the details of said question. Remember, if you prefer to listen, only this and many other videos are available on iTunes, Stitcher, Google, and of course over at HumbleMechanic.com. Real quick, let's talk about the sponsor of the day, Pentison Technical Fluids. Pentison is one of those few companies that makes the right fluids for our European cars. Things like antifreeze, brake fluid, hydraulic fluid, engine oil, even transmission fluid. In fact, they are currently leading the development on twin clutch transmission fluid, or as we call them, DSG. You can check them out and learn more at pentison.net. If you like the show, want to throw some support, but more importantly, score yourself some discounts to places like Black Forest, Eastwood, MT Knives, USP Motorsport, Adams Polishes, Kerma TDI, Prime Shades, and more, check out that crew membership program. As always, I'll put links to that and everything else we're gonna talk about today down in the description. All right, with that wrapped up, let's hit these questions. First one up is from Irving. Hey Charles, that's Irving. I have a 2006 two liter Passat. I live in Minneapolis and this past winter it got very cold. Yeah, y'all had a crazy cold snap. When it was that cold, she started every time, but I noticed oil leaking from underneath. So I finally got a chance to check it there's none coming from the pan, but it seems to be coming from the oil filter housing. I had the oil changed, but it comes right back. And there's a lack of power sometimes. The mileage is 220,000 miles. I need some insight on what could cause this. Thanks again. And where can I get a 2006 Passat repair manual? Thanks, Irvin. All right, Irvin, uh, it sounds like you got a couple of things going on. Let's talk about the oil leak first. Oil leaking from that oil filter housing in the front of the engine on that BPY in your Passat is insanely common. You have a plastic housing bolted to the block, and you have a plastic cup that screws into said plastic housing. Over time, what happens is that plastic gets a little bit brittle, maybe it expands in certain areas, contracts in other areas, and basically becomes weak and starts to leak. In addition to that, it doesn't usually help that they are typically over torqued or not cleaned properly. Dirt and debris on those threads can cause it to not seal properly. So my guess is that you're probably gonna have to replace the whole entire unit the oil filter housing, the upper part, and the cup that the filter actually goes in. If you're gonna replace one at this mileage, go ahead and do both. There's no sense in doing one and not the other one at this point, in my opinion. As for the running rough, while it's possible and disruptions in crankcase can cause it to, uh, to run poorly, I don't think your oil leak at the oil filter housing is related to your car running poorly. So of course, what we wanna do whenever our car is running poorly is we wanna do things like start with maintenance. Make sure you said you had the oil change, so you're good there. What about spark plugs? What about air filter? All the rest of the maintenance that needs to be performed on the car. Then we can go from there. Was it just running poorly when it was that cold? Cause you may have carbon buildup on the backs of the intake valves, or is it running poorly on and off all the time? These are all things we need to consider. I would probably wanna have the fault codes checked and make sure that there isn't some sort of pending fault code stored on your vehicle because that's pretty common too. Replacing that oil filter housing isn't the most fun job in the world, but it can be done. I think it can even be done without putting the car in service position, which is where we pull the front bumper cover off, slide the core support forward, and it does open up a ton of room. I think on these, you might even be able to just drop the fans out of the way, which is simple, and then do your oil filter, um, upper oil filter housing that way. From what I remember, these aren't the most fun things to do, but again, at 220K, even if you've had an oil change every 10K, you're at 22 oil change. Wouldn't be surprised at all if that, uh, that housing's cracked or deformed or something like that. Either way, a good opportunity to get it replaced, get it cleaned. Also, remember guys, whenever dealing with an oil leak, oil leaks from the top down, not the bottom up. So you wanna make sure you're looking up higher, make sure it's not something like the valve cover leaking because that's another super common repair. All right, next one up is from Mason. I drive an 08 R32 with 130K. She runs strong. However, I've been having problems with my headlights lately. They are definitely on and you can tell how bright they are outside the car, but while driving, it seems like they are pointed down. Been to the dealership, they recommended replacing the entire headlight. I then went to a local mechanic who charged me 20 bucks to aim the light straight, but that didn't do anything either. I wanna know what you think about them. Thanks, love the blog, Mason. All right, Mason. Um. 
So these were the bi-xenons. They have a little flapper in them. The flapper comes down when it's low beam, flapper flips up. You can actually hear it clunk pretty, pretty strong even while you're sitting in the car. But when that flap comes up, that is our high beam setting. A couple of things we wanna look at. When were these bulbs replaced? And what color is your light output? I know that doesn't have anything to do with adjustment. We'll get to that in a second. But if that light output looks kind of purple and doesn't look like a crisp white color, then it's probably time for a couple of new bulbs. Your car's 11 years old. If they haven't been replaced, my guess is that that color output is probably pretty poor. We also wanna look and make sure that our headlights aren't all cloudy and foggy from oxidation. Maybe we need to clean those headlights up. And, uh, and get that straightened out because that can really impact our light output. A couple of other things that we want to look at, we want to make sure that the bulb assembly with the igniter and everything on it is installed correctly. If they're not installed right, they can actually have the bulb pointed down a bit, which would then of course impact your light output. So if the bulbs were just replaced recently, that may be something we want to look at to make sure that it's all properly installed. Typically you can't get it wrong without really knowing you got it wrong on those. And those headlights, they can actually be kind of a pain in the butt to get the bulbs on. Now, when it comes to adjustment, that dude that you paid 20 bucks to probably didn't hook it up to a scan tool, probably didn't put it in the basic setting mode where you can actually adjust them. So if that didn't happen, well, you may have done absolutely nothing like you just said. Those do need to be put in a basic setting before making any kind of headlight adjustment. Otherwise, it just nills the adjustment and compensates for it with the, uh, the motors inside the headlight. I'm confused as to why the dealership said you need new headlights. Um, it says, I guess, both housings. Uh, was our fault code stored? Was there some sort of something inside the headlight that wasn't working properly? Those all make a lot of sense on why we would need a whole housing, but just for poor light output and no other information, find that kind of out there. But again, I wasn't there. I wasn't the tech looking at it. And of course, you guys know I say it all the time. One of the biggest problems in the automotive industry is poor communication. So uh, that may be a question that you want to call the dealership back and get more info on. You guys may remember way back that white GTI that I had last year. That got new headlights. And uh, I got those from FCP Euro. That was a project with FCP Euro. They were nice black housing uh, headlights and you know they looked very, very factory. You might wanna check those out. They were considerably less expensive than new OEM ones. So take a little bit deeper look. If you have access to VAGCOM or OBD11, start there. Maybe you have some kind of fault in the headlight system. Uh, maybe not, but we need to really evaluate what's going on with these lights. And we wanna look and see, are they really really out of adjustment or is our expectation different? Sometimes we expect that light to just go on forever and it has to stop. And these are projectors, so they're gonna have kind of a defined line. Or does it really like just point straight to the ground? That's another thing you can look at too. Shops do have actual headlight aiming machines that give you readings on how much light output there is. I'm sure they're crazy expensive, so your average shop doesn't do it. But depending on what state you live in, if the place you take it to does state inspections, they'll have to have some type of headlight aiming device, right? This could be a thing on the wall. It could be an actual little roll around unit like we had at the dealership. And uh, you're supposed to use that on every car that comes through and check the headlight adjustment on every single car that comes in for a state inspection, which definitely happened every single time any technician has ever done state inspection in the state of North Carolina course otherwise that would be against the law so I know they did it so check those couple of things and see where you're at uh, again that that light output color is a really good tell of whether or not that bulb is starting to wear out if you want to get those bulbs from the dealer they're insanely expensive they were at some point like $365 a piece and you could get two for a hundred bucks online of the exact same part this isn't one of those where like the cheap knockoff one isn't gonna last you these were the exact same part so that's one case where you guys at all complain about the dealership charging people a ton of money for stuff. You're actually right on that one. Even though it's not the dealership's fault, they get told what to sell the part for basically by VW or Audi or whatever manufacturer. So uh, check that out, man. And when, again, like guys, with all this stuff, when you figure out what was actually wrong, please come back to the video and post in the comments so that could help someone else out. All right, next one up is from Cody. I recently purchased a 2016 S3 and it is clear that the all-wheel drive is not working. Traction control consistently kicks on when giving it more than half throttle. And when I launched the car, only the front wheels are spinning. Took it to the dealer. They said they couldn't find anything wrong with it. 
I would have absolutely launched that car if you brought your car to me and told me that when you launch it, only the front tire spins, just so you know. Uh, they couldn't find anything wrong with it, but went ahead and replaced the Haldex pump and fluid. It's weird that they found nothing wrong, but still replaced it. I still had the same issue, so I bought VCDS, ran its test, and attached the results to the email. Please let me know if you have any idea what is causing the issue. Thanks, Cody. All right, Cody's got a fault for <laughs> the, uh, the Halidex clutch, and it is an open circuit. So this is just a two-wire pump that the signal comes right from the module. Uh, I would check those wires and make sure that they're not damaged or messed up or anything like that. I feel like that should have been something checked on the uh, on the Audi side. You know, this is a struggle here. If you're still under warranty, I would take it back and tell them, hey, my all-wheel drive is still not working. I don't know for sure about the powertrain warranty on Audi and whether that part would be covered anyway. So maybe this is worth a call to Audi of America. So what are our possibilities here that we're looking at? Of course, the Haldex pump is actually something that's not crazy common, but it happens enough that I would say that very likely was the issue had it fixed it. One of the things I think some techs are missing on this is what does the pump look like when you remove it? Is it all caked in clutch material? Was it bad for so long and not pumping fluid, but our clutches were t still turning that our clutches are now burned up? I don't know the answer to these questions. That's why when you remove a component to replace it, we need to be looking at a couple of things. We want to look at our electrical connector. Is there corrosion in it? Are the pins damaged? Are the pins bent? Is there material on it? In the pump in this case, this is a picture I snatched off the internet. Is it coated in clutch material? Because now we have two issues, right? We had a bad pump, makes sense. Now we have a bad, well, probably entire rear differential system. I don't know exactly what components that comes with on the S3. Maybe all one unit, you may have to put some pieces on it. What you can do with your VCDS, since you got it, is you can output test that pump and see if it runs. If it runs, cool. We know we have power, we know we have ground, and we know the motor inside of that pump unit is good. What we don't know is it actually doing anything. That we won't know. We need the car up in the air and we can spin the rear wheels and see what it's actually doing that way. We also want to look in the other systems, make sure there's not any other reason for the traction control to be wonky. We have a bad wheel speed sensor. Look at your tires. Make sure that they're really close in tread depth. Make sure that the sizes are appropriate for the vehicle. I think the S3 is the same size all the way around. I think it's the RS3 that has uh, different size tires front to back. Make sure that that tire tread depth is correct. Make sure that you have similar tires on the car. We had a GTI that on a hard left turn would kick the ABS on and like push the car um, through a turn. And it turned out that I think it had mismatched tires on the car. And so one tire on the rear was less tread depth than the other. And one was an all season, one was a summer performance tire. So you're getting different slip rates, different tread, you know, overall diameter of the tire. Everything got wonky on it. So make sure those things are correct too. Odds are this is probably going to need either a module or a whole entire unit. If it's under warranty, I would take it back because what they did didn't fix it. I would take it back. Maybe you take it to another Audi dealership. Something else that happens a lot of times that people don't know is that on the VW side anyway, when you have a car that comes in as a technician and you make a repair and send that car out, if that car comes back with the same issue, you are supposed to call the helpline. And that is done for a couple of reasons. One, it tracks comebacks a little bit deeper. Two, they felt like if you couldn't diagnose it right the first time, maybe you need a little extra help. And three, maybe this is a more common issue. So again, they're going to do more tracking of it. So if this car goes back, it probably should require a call to Volkswagen, or excuse me, to Audi TAC to get some assistance on what could be the issue. My guess, 100% guess, because right, I'm not looking at the car, so I can't know. So this is probably going to need a whole differential unit. Uh, maybe something in the modules messed up too. So do output test it. You can do it with VCDS very easy. See if the pump comes on. If it does, cool. We go ahead and take it back. If it doesn't, we definitely want to take it back. I would probably check fuses too. There isn't a direct fuse for that pump, but it's through the module and a blown fuse could make that pump not work. Just really depends on how the wiring is set up. And I don't know the S3 four motion wiring, sorry, the S3 Quattro wiring well enough to tell you this is the fuse to look at. 
you want to double check that and uh, and see for yourself. Oh, real quick, on that Passat, they asked about a, a repair manual. IrwinVW.com, you can buy a one-day pass and get all access to the factory repair manual. I'm sure some, um, some folks have probably found a way to find that repair manual online in PDF form. If they look hard enough, I'm not going to pass that information out because I think you should just get it from the source, but uh, that's something you may want to look at too. Uh, back to Cody's question, do do those things, but this sounds like it needs to go back to Audi because they didn't fix it anyway, and uh, it's weird that they couldn't duplicate it. I would take it there and duplicate the concern for them, and now you have a fault, so at least they have some kind of documentation to go off of. All right, last one up is from TJ. Good evening, love the videos. Recently made a jump from a Mark IV to a 2013 buyback Jetta with the Phase 2 fix. Like the car a lot so far, but I'm experiencing significantly lower mileage than anyone else I've spoken to. Hand calculated the fuel economy. Uh, average of 29.3 to 29.5 across six tanks of fuel. First three were mostly highway. Now my commute is slightly shorter and I take a different route. I only go to fuel stations that are busy. I recently started using diesel clean in the car with no difference. New fuel filter, 225, 45, 17, which are all at 35 PSI. Okay, TJ, I actually don't think that's that far off on average of what the Moroni label said. Um, so on the fix, I think most people are experiencing a couple miles per gallon difference in fuel economy. So it's not crazy. However, there have been a handful of reported cases where people are experiencing a dramatic drop in fuel economy. Your car may be one of them. The wagons, I do know, and you didn't say if it's a wagon or sedan, do know the wagons get poor, poorer, worse fuel economy than the sedans do. Guys, remember something about fuel economy. The number one factor in fuel economy, good or bad, is your driving habits. So look at your driving habits and make sure that they are fuel economy promoting. That doesn't even make sense. Make sure that they promote good fuel economy. Uh, so no jackrabbit starts, no burnouts at stoplights, whatever, right? Uh, drive speed limit. The difference in fuel economy between like 55 and 65 is insane. The faster you go, of course, the more your fuel economy does drop. If you're still finding that that fuel economy is not good enough, uh, a couple of things you could do. One, for me, I would want to make sure that this is actually out of the scope of what VW says is the average fuel economy. Understand that's just an average. It doesn't guarantee you're going to get the fuel economy anyway. But if, let's say, for example, I'm not saying this is, but for example, VW said that the fuel economy average on that car should be 39 instead of 29. Okay, now we might have an issue. Or do they say it's 30.1 or 31 and you're at 29? They're going to call that good and they're going to tell you there's no issue. The reason I bring that up is because if, if it is the huge discrepancy, you might want to take it in and have them take a look at it. This is what your warranty's for, right? Make sure that it is actually getting the fuel economy that you could expect. If you're still finding that your car's not within where you want it to be, the only real solution is something like a tune. Uh, this is a tuner box from Kerma TDI. This is actually from my diesel Torag. Kerma TDI is also this hat that I wear every time. Big supporter of the show, awesome friends of the show. You can check them out. I'll put a link down in the description for you if you want to do that. This can bring back some fuel economy. This can bring back some lost horsepower without having to gut the DPF and take all the emissions controls off. You can do that if you want. Uh, it, I don't know that I would if I had one because it's going to void your warranty, right? So if you just bought this car and you um, don't care about the warranty, you want to gut the DPF. Even honestly, guys, even a tune is probably going to void your warranty, which is why my Toreg is not tuned. You can do that and you can void the warranty. If you don't care, fine, cool with me. I know there's plenty of people that have done it. I don't know what kind of fuel economy they're seeing after that, but it's probably better. And I know they're seeing better horsepower numbers too. If you just want to tune that fuel economy up a little bit, look at something like this Kerma tuner. Look at changing your driving habits a little bit and see if that really does impact. Look at what we're loading the car with, right? All the things. It sounds like your diesel fuel issue is not an issue. Uh, the diesel fuel is not the issue, so we're good there. The fuel filter was just replaced. You can take it out and look at it and see if it's all gooped up with stuff. Maybe you did get a bad tank of fuel and um, that gooped up your filter really quick. So just a couple of things I would do, man. But if you're seeing that it is dramatically less than what VW says is the average post-fix, post-modification, Time to take it into the dealership and see if they can take a look at it. You know, as I say that, I would probably take it to the dealership anyway for the sole reason that now you're going to have documentation with VW saying that my fuel economy doesn't meet what 
the average is supposed to be. I wouldn't say it doesn't meet what I expected because what you expected and the reality of it, as much as I hate to say what I'm about to say, doesn't mean anything. Your expectation and reality don't have to be anywhere in the same ballpark. So keep that in mind. If you were expecting 80 miles per gallon and you're getting 30, 30 may actually be exactly where they said it was going to be, exactly where it's supposed to be. And your 80 miles per hour, or 80 miles per gallon expectation was just off in left field. Not saying that's what happened, but I know a lot of times people do have an expectation and then reality is way over here, and uh, that makes them upset because they weren't expecting something a little closer to reality. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. Questions, comments, drop them down below. If you liked the video, hit that thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.